This video is about the AVO valve characteristic meter Mark IV, or in other words, a tube tester of the Mark IV type. Now, to this tube tester, I have uh, constructed myself an interface for a digital meter showing the plate current of the tube, regardless of the condition of the tester or what we are doing. It's always showing the plate current of the tube. Um, when you begin a test, you have to set the tester for the expected test data of the tube. Now, I have put this on this little paper here, and on purpose I have set the tester, of course, completely wrong. So first we have now to adjust the tester. Before we begin, we make this setting here. It means check cold, and we're going to check leakage of the tube. Now, if you put the test on that setting, check cold, it is, so to say, the beginning of a test sequence. You go through all the sequences here, that, that, like that, until you test it, and then you do the gas test. So it is in that sequence that you have to do the tests. We begin with the first test, and that's the cold check for shorts. In this condition, the tester is basically dead. There is no voltage on the tube. And the only thing that we are testing at that moment is the calibration of the mains voltage. So I'll switch the tester on. And maybe there is a setting here, a node setting, grid voltage setting. But in this condition here, there is no voltage on the tube. The tube is just there, but it's dead. Now, first thing we do, we have to calibrate the tester for the mains voltage, which is... Uh, continuously changing and the tester responds not extremely sensitive to it but one or two clicks gives little difference in the measurement already so we have to put it exactly on the calibration mark or sometimes as close as you can get so now it's just below and now it's just above i can take either of those two settings first thing is we do set the anode voltage for the tube, 250 volt. The grid voltage is minus 8.5. By these systems, it's 0 to 5 plus 5 volt. So I have to set it to 3.5. And then because it's plus 5, I have now minus 8.5 volts on the grid. The expected plate current is 10.5 milliampere, for which I need the 25 milliampere scale. The expected transconductance is 1.6 milliampere per volt. I put it here on 1.6, and now I can begin the test. First thing I do, I have to test the test the tube for leakage and for shorts, because the, if you don't do that, sort of you can jump to the test immediately, but the day will come when you have a shorter tube, or when you have a mistake with the roller wheel setting which for the tester is the same as a shorted tube, or you put in a tube of, a, of the wrong type by mistake, anything can go wrong. And if that is the case, you would find a unexpected short in the tube. So when you put in, um, now this is an ECC82, if I would put in an, an EL84 tube or some, some other kind of totally wrong tube, I would immediately uh, find out that the tester tells me this tube is shorted, which would be right if I try to test ECC82 and put EL84 tube in there. Now I've put, of course, the right type of tube in here, and uh, the roller wheel is also set right. So I'm going to find no shorts with this tube. First thing I check for the heater short. Now interestingly, you see it does give a short, which is true because the heater, uh, in terms of uh, conductivity, is like a short. So basically, this only tells me the tube has a uh, working heater wire, although there's no voltage on it yet, because if I take out the tube, you will see is now there's no heater wire, so this is already a defect situation. I would expect a short on the heater, and there is none, so the heater would be broken. But this tube has a good heater, so it's conductive. 
Then I will check for shorts on the electrodes, cathode, grid, screen. This tube doesn't have, but it has two anodes. So I'm supposed to have no short on the cathode, none on the grid, and none on the two anodes. Well, that is uh, in, in the expectation, because this tube, I knew it was good. But you have to do this test always. Next test comes, you have to set the heater voltage right. I forgot to do that, so it's 6.3 volts. Next test comes with the heater voltage on. So I put it on hot. The tube is glowing now. Now I have to wait a little bit till the cathode gets, gets warm. And in this condition, the cathode is tested for leakage against all other electrodes which are strapped together. And that is basically a, a good method because it doesn't matter if there's a cathode to grid short or a cathode to anode short. It's a short and all these shorts are a short. And if there is no short, that means all the electrodes are not shorted against the cathode. And as you can see, there is none. It stays at zero, so there is no short. This test is now passed and the tube is, is glowing. The, 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 uh, the heater is glowing. Next test I do is cathode to heater insulation. It says here CH in cathode to heater isolation. That's a very important test because if, if there would be any leakage of that, it would inject AC current from the AC heating into the cathode of the tube and that would give a hum in the signal. So this should be as low as possible. Basically, the needle should stay at the left. If you have some kind of needle, mo needle movement, don't trust this tube. Now, this leakage is uh, measured very nicely on this tube tester in, in mega ohm. So it's 10 mega ohm here, 25. So the, the, the leakage, or the, so let's say the resistance of the cathode to the heater is far above 25 mega ohm in hot conditions, so, so to say, there is no leakage. And if all these tests are passed, I can now go to the tube test, so the real tube test. So the tube has no leakage of any kind and no shorts and nothing, and it's just ready to be tested now. So I already have set all the voltages right. I can go now to test. There you see, this tube is not giving full 10.5 milliampere as expected. It's doing only 9 milliampere. So maybe it's low emission. Maybe not. We will see. I can already say it's probably not low emission because it's an NOS tube. And there are always two reasons for the plate current being too low. One is loss of emission with old tubes, with used tubes, with gassy tubes, we'll, we'll go to the gas test also. And the other is, uh, with NOS tube, the most common is anode distance tolerance. Now if the anode distance is larger than normal, there will be less current than normal. But also that will make the transconductance higher than normal. And the this issue of anode distance tolerance can be easily detected and kept, kept apart from loss of emission. So if the, the anode current is lower than normal, it doesn't have much to say. It can just as well be anode distance tolerance. And we're going to see that if this tube has higher than expected uh, transconductance. I see now I made a little mistake. The transconductance of this tube is not 1.6, it's 2.2, the expected transconductance. So I'll correct it here quickly, I'm sorry for that. 2.2. And I have to set this wheel to 2.2 to make this right. So now we're going to do the transconductance test. Another thing we're seeing, that before we go to the transconductance test, that the plate current has increased a little bit it's 9 milliampere, and if I look at the digital meter, which is a little bit more precise than the analog meter, I see now that it's 
milliampere already instead of the 8.5 that we had in the beginning. So the, the heating up of, is doing this tube uh, good and also some burning will to do more good to this tube and if you just use this tube long enough um, it'll it'll go up to its ten, expected 10.5 milliampere. It's just been sleeping uh, 50 years this tube and it's just not uh, burned in yet. Now next thing we're going to do is the transconductance measurement. As I said I expect it to be above average because the plate current is below average. To do the transconductance measurement we have to do a thing it's called backing off. Backing off the, of, of, the, of the tester means only that I add a artificial voltage to the panel meter only. There is nothing changing to the tube measurement, nowhere is any changes, only the meter which I force back to a lower position with an additional electrical voltage. We're going to do that and you can look at the digital meter showing the real current is 9 milliampere. And I change it here on the panel and you see the real current is not changing. And I put now the meter on 0 milliampere. This is for coarse, this one is for fine. I put the meter now at 0 milliampere. And now I go to more sensitivity, do this even more sensitive. At a 2.5 milliampere scale, I'm zeroing it out now as good as I can. And then comes an interesting thing this tester is doing. When I go to milliampere per volt, it just adds one volt to the grid voltage, and of course then the plate volt, volt the plate current will rise because of that. And it will rise exactly with the transconductance of this tube. So in milliampere per volt, if this tube is 2.2 milliampere per volt, if I add one volt to the grid voltage, the plate current will go up with 2.2 milliampere. And this is exactly what we are going to see. I go now to milliampere per volt and the plate current of this tube is going up. And to measure the transconductance I have to put the wheel in the, such condition that we have a one this on exactly on the one here. And we see now that this, this tube has 2.5 milliampere per volt instead of the expected 2.2 milliampere per volt. So we end up now with a situation where the, the uh, plate current is lower than normal and the transconductance is accordingly higher than normal in the same, same ratio actually. Meaning that, that the emission of this tube is 100% and the tube is simply new and perfect condition. Um, this tester can do something else. If I put, so I've been measuring now that the transconductance is 2.5 milliampere per volt. If I put the tester on the expected transconductance of this tube, then this the, the needle will go to the right. I put it on 2.2, and it means the the transconductance of this tube is higher than expected. And we already knew this, of course. And they they call this the, the quality of the tube. And that is the, uh, the end of this, this part of the test. Next thing is we can do a gas test. Um, this is not a, sometimes not a very important test. People say I have gassy tubes and is there gas in the tube? And we know all people know if you have a gassy tube it gets worse and you throw away your money when you buy one like that. But if a tube performs with maximum emission like this one. So I have a um, little bit lower plate current and in the same ratio I have higher transconductance. That means the emission is 100%. A gassy tube has not 100% emission. So I'm going to do a gas test on this tube. Let's put it on gas. And you see there is no gas. Otherwise the meter would go to the right and if there would be gas I would be measuring it. The, 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 um, the grid current resulting from this and there is none. So the, the gas test for this tube is um, giving no result, hopefully because that's what we want, but I already um, expected this to be the case. So 
this is the, the end of this part of the test, but I can also test the other anode because we have been doing anode number one. I go back to normal testing, so I just remove the backing off. We see now that this tube had these uh, 9 milliampere, as we already knew. It's 9 milliampere on this scale or 9 milliampere on the lower scale, it's just the same, same measurement. So I'm measuring now 9 milliampere for this tube. And I can also measure on the anode 2, and it's also 9 milliampere. So in terms of matching, this is a very nice tube. It is perfectly matched, and the emission is at 100%. It's just a, a very nice, very good tube. Well, that's the end of this test.